So we have gone ahead and have drawn a free body diagram showing the single force that is acting on the spacecraft, which is represented by this gray dot. That single force has a magnitude of 20 newtons, and we have drawn it so that that force is acting along the positive x direction. Now, in the first question here, in part A, we have to calculate the resulting acceleration. So let's take a look at how we can do that by applying Newton's second law which tells us that the net force acting along the x-direction is equal to the mass of the spacecraft multiplied by its acceleration in that same direction along the x-axis. Now we can see from the free body diagram that once again there's only a single force here. It's 20 newtons. So we can go ahead and plug that in. We have 20 newtons for that net force. And then this is going to be set equal to the mass of the spacecraft, which was given as 900 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration in the x-direction. Now, we can solve easily for the acceleration if we divide both sides by the 900 kilograms. And when we do so, we will see that the acceleration along the x direction is approximately 0 0.0222. And then this is acceleration, so this will come out in meters per second squared. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B, we must calculate the distance says how far, so that's a distance, that the spacecraft will travel in one day. Now, let us recall a few things regarding kinematics. Now, we know that if we wanted to calculate distance, we could use the formula given in an earlier chapter. It was probably written as x minus x naught is equal to an initial velocity along the x direction multiplied by time, and then plus one half times the acceleration in the x direction multiplied by time squared. Now, we can simplify this a little bit because x minus x naught can be condensed into a delta x. And in addition, the spacecraft starts from rest. So this means that this initial velocity in the x direction is zero. And when we multiply zero by time, it cancels this term altogether. So now we have just one half multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by time squared. Now, remember above, we already have the acceleration, which is great. But what we do need to do is convert the time because the time was given in days. It said one day. So we have to take a brief aside and just do a little unit conversion. We'll start with one day. And then, of course, we know that one day is 24 hours. And then we also know that one hour is 60 minutes. And then finally, we know that one minute is 60 seconds. So this is going to convert the time into the standard unit of seconds. Let's pick up our calculators and just multiply this out. And we're going to get 86,400 seconds. So that's the time that we'll be using in part B and also later as you'll see in part C. So let's go ahead and plug in the known acceleration and then the time that we just calculated. And the answer here is going to be a relatively large number. So in scientific notation, we would have approximately 8.29 times 10 to the power of 7 and this will be now in meters because we have calculated a delta x or a distance. So that's the correct answer to part B. Let's check out what we need to calculate in part C. And in part C, we need to calculate how fast the spacecraft will then be moving. So we have to calculate basically its final velocity. Now again, it starts from rest, so this means that the initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second. We know the acceleration in the x direction. We also know the time. And then we also are looking for the final velocity. So we just go back to kinematics one more time, and we know that the final velocity in the x direction would equal the initial velocity in the x direction plus the acceleration multiplied by the time. The initial velocity, again, is zero, so we can knock out this term. And that all, or all that means is that we have to take the acceleration, which we've calculated in part A, and then multiply that by the time that we determined in part B. So let's pick up our calculators and process this. And once again, a relatively large number. So the final velocity is going to be approximately 1.92 times 10 to the power of 3. This will be in meters per second because it's a final velocity. And that is the correct answer to part C. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But please, of course, do not feel obligated to do so.